What's up guys? Welcome to the Living Las Vegas channel where we talk about all things Las Vegas. So today we're going to do a little top 10 list of the top 10 reasons why I absolutely love living in Las Vegas. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to give you my number one reason that you might not have thought would be the coolest thing about living in Vegas. All right, let's get after it. <laughs> First time on the channel and you want to know about all things Las Vegas, be sure to hit that little bell and subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know what's going on in the Las Vegas market. My name is Adam Hockenberry and myself and my team literally get calls, texts, and emails on the daily of people that are looking to make a move to the Las Vegas area. Now, if that is you, you are looking to make a move to the Las Vegas Henderson area, whether it's a week from now, a month from now, even if it's a year from now, feel free to reach out. My information is in the description. I'd be happy to help you make a smooth move to the Las Vegas area. All right, let's get to the video. So I wanted to make a video, kind of a 2.0. I did a video similar to this a while ago and I just, I didn't like the video. <laughs> so I wanted to do, and I, I added and tweaked a couple things too. So I wanted to do a, a top 10 video of, of reasons why I love living in Las Vegas. And of course we know there are pitfalls, no place is perfect, but I wanted to just get into 10 quick topics. It's not gonna be a crazy long video and just maybe elaborate on what makes Las Vegas Henderson area such an awesome place to live. So if you guys disagree with any of these, and some of these are gonna be a matter of perspective as well. So I will preface that and, and touch on that as, as much as possible. But other than that, if you guys have any suggestions, if you think I just horribly missed something, feel free to leave me a comment. I'm always looking to get better. Let's just make the comments nice if we can. I don't need to be mean, I'm a human being just like anybody else. But other than that, let's get to this list. All right, and just for starters, these aren't necessarily in any particular order until the end. So the number one thing that's the coolest thing about moving to Las Vegas, and I know this is something my wife really struggled. We left Los Angeles. My wife had lived in Los Angeles 16 years. I would lived there 10 and a half. So we made a lot of good friends. We had a lot of good relationships in Los Angeles and it made just moving anywhere difficult. So one of the perks I think about, and one of the biggest perks of living in Las Vegas is the chances of seeing your friends. Cause I know sometimes you move to, I don't know, wherever it may be. Like if I move back to Wisconsin where I was from originally, where I'm from originally, the, the, the fact that I would probably not see a lot of my friends from LA if I moved back to Wisconsin where I'm from. Maybe I'd see one or two, but I think it's pretty doubtful. But Las Vegas, not so much. Uh, the chances of seeing your friends or whatever, or, or if you did come from somewhere else, is very high. So that is one thing. Las Vegas, for better or for worse, is a very transient town. So it's pretty cool that you get to have a lot of people coming here for conventions, for you know just going out, celebrations, weddings, bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, you know, etc. So Las Vegas is a great place to live or to move to, especially if you're from somewhere else, if you're hoping you're gonna get to see your friends again. Yeah, it's number one. All right, another one of the big perks of living in Las Vegas is honestly the proximity and accessibility to other cities. So uh, Harry Reid Airport's awesome. I lived in LA before, certainly not to, I love Los Angeles. I, like I always tell anybody, I pretty much grew up in Los Angeles and became like a responsible adult in Los Angeles. So I, I'm very fond of Los Angeles. However, when it comes to the airport, it's not even close to which airport I would rather fly out of. I also flew out of O'Hare Airport a lot when I lived in Chicago and in the Midwest. Again, comparing Harry Reid to either one of those, I will take Harry Reid a thousand times. It flies to over 170 destinations. It has over 32 different airlines that it supports. And honestly, for the most part, your tickets are almost always gonna be pretty reasonable in comparison to a lot of other cities. Now, there are a few exceptions like Super Bowl, New Year's. Um, if we do have like a major convention like CES is New Year right after New Year's, SEMA is typically beginning of November, mid-November now that we have Formula One, you're gonna have a little bit higher premium. But other than that, as far as accessibility, the airport goes everywhere. And then honestly too, your accessibility to places like Zion National Park, Bryce National Park, Grand Canyon. You're only four hours from the beach in California. If you do miss the ocean, 
and probably three, four hours from a lot of like world-class skiing as well. So as far as accessibility and a lot of things we have access to, Las Vegas is a very, very good town as far as like a little central hub to center around. Number three I'm gonna talk about is dining. Dining is phenomenal out here. You know, we have the Las Vegas Strip, and yes, you know, you can make an argument that like, if there's a really famous restaurant in New York or LA or San Francisco or somewhere else, and they do their second, you know, 2.0, so to speak, it's maybe not as good as the original in New York or whatever. However, it's still gonna be really, really good. So if you like good dining, whether it's the Strip, and honestly, even if you get off the strip, it's phenomenal. Like you can go in certain parts, Spring Valley, particularly a little bit closer to the strip in downtown. Like there, there are some great restaurants there. The, the downtown Arts District, Fremont Street, there's still some good, really great restaurants. And even outside the city, you have a lot of really, really, really good dining options. Now, obviously the more you go to the strip and if you are you know, having an anniversary or a special dinner, depending on what your budget is for dinners, you will spend a pretty penny on the strip. There's no question but you certainly have more options than most cities. Yes, do you have maybe a few more in like New York, Chicago, LA? Maybe, yeah, I think so. Maybe even a little more top tier restaurants. But as far as the amount of really, really good restaurants for the size of the city you live in, I don't think there's a city that beats Las Vegas. Dining is absolutely phenomenal. Fourth thing I'm gonna talk about here is housing costs. Now this is gonna be a huge matter of perspective. Okay, so I moved from Los Angeles. So from my perspective of where I was currently at and what I was currently paying and what I got <laughs> for the money, I upgraded immensely. Housing costs were a big, drastic improvement for me. Now, if you're from somewhere, I don't know, like Cincinnati, Ohio, or I don't know, like Little Rock, Arkansas, or somewhere like that, Cleveland, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana, any, any place like that, you're, you're gonna be downgrading how much bang you can get for your buck from a real estate perspective. But if you're coming from an area like Hawaii, which we have a lot, they actually call Las Vegas the ninth island because we have a lot of Hawaiians that live here. Los Angeles, anywhere in California really. It's Seattle, Washington DC, Boston, New York, Miami, Austin, Texas, any of those kind of places, you are definitely going to maximize your, your dollar's gonna stretch a lot further. Let's just put it that way. So when I started, it has gone up, so it's not as cheap. The legendary stories I used to hear about in Los Angeles when I lived there, you can buy a home for 100 grand, well that no longer exists. We're actually above the median price point nationally, so we are a little bit more than the median home price nationally is. So we were actually a little bit below when I first started in real estate, but almost seven years ago now. But we're still very manageable. Our median home price is still under $500,000, which is getting harder and harder to accomplish now. So housing costs, I still look at as a perk, especially considering most of the people that are coming to the Las Vegas area are likely coming from somewhere like California, Hawaii, Seattle, DC, somewhere that's a little bit more expensive. All right, number five is gonna be diversity. Las Vegas is a very diverse place, particularly for the size. And we're a little over 2 million people now, but it's just amazing with all the entertainment and everything like that, everything that's available here, it does have a lot of people from all over the world flock to Las Vegas. I lived in Chicago, I lived in LA, and I would say Las Vegas is easily as diverse as either of those cities, at least in my experience. I have met people from all over the world as much as any large city I've been to, except maybe New York. New York is the most diverse city I've ever been to, but and uh, the, the biggest melting pot I've ever been to, but it's awesome out here. You can learn so much about so many different cultures and there's so many things, uh, so many different people, so many different kinds of food that you can learn from. It's phenomenal. I absolutely love that about Las Vegas. It kind of gives you that, I don't want to say small town, but it's it uh, can give you very much like a suburban-y type feel as far as how the town is, is structured if you don't live right by the strip. But it also gives you the awesome diversity and you know kind of that melting pot that you get as a perk being in like a huge major metropolitan area like New York or LA or somewhere like that so I put this one sixth it's it's one of the top reasons why people move here but I didn't want to get too boring right away uh, I almost did this first but it's taxes taxes are phenomenal here you know we have a lot of really beneficial things about living in Las Vegas one of the big benefits is these casinos they generate a ton of revenue and we have tourism as you know, a giant industry here. So essentially really the tourists and the people that visit Las Vegas pay a lot of and take a lot of the tax burden off the residents here. 
which is awesome. So we still have a pretty relatively high sales tax, 8.38 or 8375, whatever it is. So that's decent. Registering your car is pretty expensive here. So there are some expenses more than most states. However, we don't have income tax and our property taxes are very manageable. Unless you're buying like a brand new house in a brand new community, you're getting close to like one, like usually averages close to about 1% of the purchase price of the home, a little bit less. But if you're buying a home that's even a few years old, let's say a $500,000 house and a house that was built in, I don't know, 2004, you're probably around between like $3,200 and $4,000 a year in property tax. I already know that's cheaper than a lot of places, um, even places with comparable costs and whatnot. And then of course, no state income tax. When I moved here, I was still bartending and I was bartending in, in Los Angeles and I was amazed at how much more of my check I kept when I first came out here. And I hear that a lot. If someone can make comparable money and become a resident, they literally just added almost 10% of their take home pay back into their pocket. So it's a huge perk of Las Vegas and really Nevada as a whole. All right, seventh thing I'm gonna get into is the outdoors. There's actually a lot to do from the perspective of like, if you're an outdoors person, like you like to hike, you like to do a lot of things outside, you can actually do quite a bit here in Las Vegas. There's some really good hikes. If you wanna do like a quicker hike, like Lone Mountain, which is in the Northwest part of town, or you wanna do like Red Rock National Park, there's also, if you go all the way, and that's gonna be like for a little bit west of the city. If you wanna go all the way east of the city, you got Frenchman Canyon, which is really cool. And then even up to Mount Charleston, there's a lot of really cool hikes up in there. And plus, if it's the summertime, that's really the only place if you're not hiking at like five or six in the morning or like eight or nine at night, because <laughs> that is one, one downfall. You're not gonna wanna be outdoors too much in the summer because it does get pretty hot, particularly from like the hours of like say 10 a.m. till probably like 6 p.m., 7 p.m. At Lake Mead is awesome. You have uh, that, uh, you know, if you wanna do, so we do have a body of water. We're not exactly water rich here in, in the Las Vegas area, but Lake Mead is about 30 minutes probably from, you know, really Las Vegas proper, out in Henderson there. And then you also have a lot of really, really cool like day trips you can take. I mean, Zion is only like two hours and 45 minutes away. You also have uh, Havasu Pike Falls, which is really, really cool. And there's there's a lot of little hikes that I probably don't even fully know about that are within like an hour of here. So outdoors, really, really underrated for sure. Obviously in the summer, you're a little more limited, but really for about nine months out of the year, eight, nine months out of the year, you're you got a lot of options. All right, number eight, this, this is gonna be a matter of perspective again. So I, I'm coming from the perspective of a kid that grew up in Wisconsin, okay? And then I moved to Chicago for like a year and a half, then I moved to Minneapolis for two years, and then I moved to LA for 10 and a half years. So had I been born and raised in LA, I probably would not have weather as a perk, okay? Because uh, there's no doubt I downgraded my weather situation moving from Southern California to Las Vegas. But Comparing the Midwest and super cold, cold winters and really hot, humid summers with bugs and mosquitoes and stuff like that, I definitely upgraded from you know where I was born and where I grew up in the Midwest. So coming from that perspective, like I said, from Southern California, I knew I was down getting the weather, but like the tax, cost of living situation, and just other, uh, other variables too made it more conducive where I, I could kind of overlook the weather and it's not like the weather is that bad. Now, this summer we had a brutally hot summer. This is, we broke like every record possible this summer. So I'm hoping that's not gonna be like a trend and uh, we're not gonna be one-upping. I'm hoping the next summer cools down a little bit. But other than that, for an unusually hot and long summer, it, it's still pretty good. Winters do get a little colder here than you think. They're a little deceiving. Now, if you're from Canada or like the Midwest or like, you know, up in the East Coast, like in New England, you're gonna laugh about winters here. But if you're from like, you know, Southern California, maybe even like Texas, Georgia, I know they get cold there. They get probably more snow than we get, but we do get a chilly desert, desert chill here. But for the most part, I always say you don't shovel sunshine in the desert. So for me, I don't like cold weather. I like ice hot weather. Not 120 degrees, but I like like 100 and down if it's dry and not humid. And now also one big perk, we got 300 days of sunshine. We're the second sunniest city in the whole United States, which I need the sun, it makes me happy. To me, that's like super, super important. All right, number nine thing. This is gonna be a fairly obvious, I almost left this one for last is my favorite. This is kind of neck and neck. But guys, it's entertainment. Like Las Vegas, we, you got it all in Las Vegas. Like 
I don't even go to the strip that often, but I just like the fact that I have the option if I want to. So if I want to see a concert, whoever's coming to town, they're coming to Las Vegas. It doesn't matter whether it's Bruno Mars, Taylor Swift, whoever. I, you could, I mean, like uh, Bon Jovi. What, whatever you're into. I know Sting did New Year's uh, a few years ago. If you're here long enough, they're coming. Whoever you want to see in a concert. You want to see great comedians, world class, they probably got a residence here. Or they're coming, you know, on a one-off show or whatever. Before I forget, Cirque du Soleil. There's how many different Cirque du Soleil shows you can see that are just the most unbelievable athletic human beings on earth. They're doing crazy stuff that I don't even know, pretty much I would pull every muscle in my body trying to attempt to do any of it. They're superhumans. So that's an amazing thing if you're into that kind of thing. And I'm probably missing a few things, but guys, now we added sports to the mix. So we got the Las Vegas Aces. I'm gonna start with them because they're back-to-back -back WNBA champions, which is pretty awesome. We got the Stanley Cup champion, Las Vegas Golden Knights, which is unbelievable. They're like a historic team. They're gonna be the Las Vegas Aces. So we have all this coming. They're gonna be tearing down the Tropicana and building an unbelievable stadium. So it's all gonna be right there. How cool is that? So as far as entertainment, I, I just don't think it could be it. Combined with the dining, and if you are into nightclubs and, and going out and partying or pool parties or whatever, I mean, gosh, they have EDC coming out here every year and other festivals, iHeartRadio, tons of huge concerts and stuff. I, from an entertainment perspective, I just, it, it would be tough to beat it. LA had some really good entertainment, but that's a metropolitan area of like 12 million people. We're, like, we're talking about an area of like a metropolitan area of a little over 2 million people. So for the size of the city, I just don't think it could beat entertainment. Coupled with the cost of living and the tax advantages, it's awesome. This is kind of a hidden number one thing for me. And I, I don't know if it's the most important thing, but it's a perk that when you go to other cities, like if you visit somewhere else, the fact that this is a 24 hour town. Now, like granted, if you go visit New York City, yeah, it's pretty 24 hours. But I would say I, from leaving Las, Ve Los Angeles and coming here, I would say it's way more 24 hour town here than there and almost anywhere I've ever gone. I don't know anywhere besides, like I said, maybe New York City that's as much of a 24 hour town as Las Vegas. It's awesome. If you wanna eat at odd hours, you wanna keep an odd schedule, whatever it is, you're, you know, if you like nights or you're a night owl or whatever, you can get pretty much food from almost anywhere. Stores are open. It, it has calmed down a little bit since COVID. It was way more 24 hours before the shutdown in COVID. A lot of hours got adjusted with certain grocery stores and all that kind of stuff. Almost everything was 24 hours before that. But still, even now, you have so many more options after like regular, like say nine, 10 o'clock at night type business hours than you have anywhere else. That's such a perk. And it's one of those things too, when you do travel somewhere else, it is so much like, I don't want to say it's inconvenient, but you get spoiled out here because you just have access to whatever you want really at all hours of the day. To me, that is one of the coolest perks of living in Las Vegas. All right, that is gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as I did making it. If this is your first time on the channel and you wanna know about all things Las Vegas, be sure to hit that little bell and subscribe to the channel and then you can be the first to know what's going on in the Las Vegas market. Again, my name is Adam Hockenberry. Myself and my team, we literally get calls, texts, and emails on the daily of people that are looking to make a move to the Las Vegas area. Now, if that is you, you're looking to make a move out here, whether it's a week from now, a month from now, even if it's a year from now, feel free to reach out. My team and I would be happy to help you make a smooth transition out here to the Las Vegas or Henderson area. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.